have security expert Steve Gibson here to give us a glimpse into his software, Spinrite. It's a hard disk uh, utility software that has lately become more and more of a recovery program. I mean, really become a valuable recovery program. Well, and long-term maintenance, too, because it'll keep your drive from dying. Steve, how long ago did you write the first Spinrite? 16 years ago. 16 years ago. Spinrite 1. Yeah, Spinrite 1. I 16 had a years copy. Ago. I remember RLL and MFM drive. Yeah. That was when 10 megabytes was a big drive, oh, 10 yeah. or 20. The and then original they did the IBM RLLs X and you could get 20 megabytes. 20 or 30. <gasps> Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> I ran my bulletin board on two Seagate RLL drives. Yeah. 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 Well, times have changed, but drive hardware hasn't changed all that much, has it? Well, the it? fundamentals have stayed the same. We, we know that drives die. People have problems with their data. Yeah. And, and even though drives have like gotten huge in size and the price has dropped way down, we bought our first one gig drive for $1,000. Wow. And now you can get a 200 gig drive for 129 It's less than a buck a gig. It's less than a buck a gig. And so people say, wait a minute, you know, uh, do I want to buy something like Spinrite to, to, which might be in some cases more expensive than the drive. I'll throw it, I'll throw but it because out. these drives are so big, families have their photo albums on them. They've got their huge music collections. They've got valuable data, which is to them substantially more more valuable than the drive itself. Right. So we're still selling Spinrite, which is now at version 6, 16 years later, because drives start to fail, they start going a little wonky, they, you know, they... Are they more reliable than they used to be, would you say? I don't really think so. I think that the manufacturers could make a perfect drive for $1,000, uh, but they couldn't sell any for $1,000. Yeah, yeah, right. So they're always trying to cram as many bits as they possibly can, competing with each other, and so they're like on the edge of reliability. Always. They're reliable enough. Right. But, you know, and if they fail, Western Digital will send you a new one. Right. They won't send you your data. Data. That's the problem. And so Spinrite's key is it can help you recover, it, it can maintain your drive over the long term and, and, and recover data that if the drive starts going a little strange. It's a Windows program. It's running in Windows right now. Well, it, it's both a Windows and a DOS. It's sort of a weird hybrid. Mm -hmm. you, you, if you run the, the, the single XE, all my, like all my code, there's no installation, no setup, nothing changes in your computer. No DLLs spread nothing. all over the place. You run one executable file like this, and it allows you to create a bootable diskette to create an ISO image that's that you could you then burn to make your own bootable CD. It's sort of like an emergency recovery CD. That's what I did, and I bring that around with me. Because most people, many people don't have floppies anymore, but almost everybody has a CD-ROM. Right, well, and, and the third option is install it on a drive, including one of the little thumb drives. Oh, that's a good You can idea. install it on a bootable USB, just plug it into a machine, boot it up, and it, it, it's, the Spinrite also includes its own version of DOS, free DOS. And so, so it brings its operating system with it. The whole, the whole file is... Uh, 197K. K. One file, 197K. K. It, down, it downloads so quickly, people end up with like with five or six copies. Because yeah, they think it's it like, didn't download. You know, it. It didn't, you know, the old dialogue hardly so even comes up. So when you first run it in Windows, you'll see this, right. so you can make yourself a boot disk. Now we're going to switch over to DOS. We're going to run that boot we're disk. We're going to run that boot disk, okay. uh, or floppy, or, or, or whatever you create is switching over to DOS. Okay. So we're going to switch down our, uh, our uh, little USB switcher here. This is another machine that actually you brought up with you. Right. Just because it was all set up. So, right. so here we are, Spinrite and DOS, a couple menus in, to, just to save time, mm -hmm. showing us uh, the, the main menu. Spinrite is compatible with every operating system format now. That was the big change going to Spinrite 6. DOS, NTFS, L Linux. Linux, L L Linux swap or not, there's like 255 different operating systems. Even I ran it on my, on my Linux, uh, on my uh, TiVo hard drive. You could do anything. And it worked with no problem. Yes, ver even, even an empty disk that you've never formatted, if you wanted to like, you know, uh, run Spinrun on it to, to, to show that it was really up and running um, before you installed any software on it. So here's Spinrite running. Actually, it's continued from where it left off. It so remembers that. It remembers it. And so if you want to run it in several sessions, you can. However, it's so fast now um, with, well, with now version wait a 6. Minute. Drives are so big. It may be faster, but the drive, it still takes a few hours sometimes. Well, yeah, 100 drive. gig drive is, I mean, you're literally, we're, the, 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 this little circle in um, uh, scanning here is literally transferring data test patterns in and out of the drive. So you read it, you write it, you read it, you write it. 
Is that what you're and doing? And read it and write it, yes. You do it several times. Different patterns. You, you take the data, you put it somewhere safe, and then you write and read and write on that. Exactly. Sector. We mess around with the magnetic surface underneath in order to analyze what's going on. Oh, look at this. This what's shows exactly what SpinRite is doing from any moment. We've, so far, to give you a sense for how much work is happening, we're approaching a gigabyte of data just now that we've read and written. Wow. You know, hundreds, hundreds of megabytes Per, per, per minute as we move through the drive. This is the raw data going through. And it's amazing to see. Sometimes you'll see like your own data or your name or your email or something right. because on a non-encrypted drive, it's all right that's, there. That's the data, yeah. Then this shows a bunch of information sort of on, on the techie side about how SpinWrite's talking to the drive, what the capabilities are of, of the drive well, itself. How often would you, would you recommend running this? Uh, once a week, once a month, once a year? What? I would say monthly. If, for example, this 100 gig drive takes about six hours, as, right. as we were seeing. If, if we look over, it'll estimate how long it's going to take. We've got five hours and 43 minutes left right. to do 100 gigs. So, so you could run it overnight right. to keep your drive in shape. Now, now, what kind of things are we going to get that we would know that our drive was in shape or wasn't in shape? Well, here, the, uh, this screen shows the, the smart system monitor. Smart is something, sort of a lame technology, but it's better than nothing, where the drive stands for self-monitoring analysis and reporting technology. And there, in theory, it's going to tell you when times. it's going to fail, right? But it never does. It never does. I've never, I have yet to see... My drive say I'm about to fail. These, these three parameters, this 153, 190, and 29, those are supposed to be like quality measures, and they're, they're right now sort of, you know, unknown numbers. When they get to zero, that's bad. So if, <laughs> if some people do run on a drive that's getting a little flaky, and, and as the bar shrinks, it turns red, saying that, that spin, using SpinRite is... is is showing the drive that it's got a problem. Okay. Then the other cool thing is that this error count... This so is actually more valuable. And this is something that no smart drive will tell you. No other software on the planet does this. It's, able it's stored by the smart infra the drive, but it won't tell you this? It doesn't publish it. Oh, interesting. So, so SpinWrite's able to query the drive. This is the number of, of read errors which had been corrected. This ECC you mean, correcting You mean since count. we started doing this? Since we just started doing well, it. Well, wait a minute. That 35,000 errors, this drive, you better get a new drive. Well, all drives because they've got so much data in there, they're now dependent upon correcting the data. This, this is sort of, normal? It, most, it reads most of the data, and then it figures out the, what should have been it's, in the parts it couldn't. You mean, in the normal course of operation, my drive has tens of thousands of errors a minute? Yes. <laughs> yes. But, but it works. But they're corrected. Okay. They're correctable That's, errors. ECC is an and amazing And they're designed thing. that way. Yeah. So the, the, uh, the other thing is, this is the error rate. We see that we've had a total of 42,000 some odd errors, but we're, we're, we're we're seeing errors at a rate of 11,285 per that's million the, that's sectors. That's kind of the average. It's then. sort of the average rate at which the errors are occurring. So what's very cool is, is a user could run spinner on their drive, figure out by, by looking at this what the error rate is. And so, okay, and, 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 write, and write it down. So this my, is, my this drive... This is normal, 11,000 uh, per million. Well, it's normal for this drive, for this drive. On, on a healthy drive. But if they ran it over the course of months and kept track of this, if this error rate jumped up all of a sudden, that's a very good indication that something is not happy in the drive. Back it's having to correct now. a lot more errors than it did when you first bought it. Okay, so that's a, that's a symptom that you should do something about your drive. Right. This is something, by the way, that no smart monitoring program tells you. No. Even though this is the most important well, metric of all. Well, because smart monitoring is passive. It, the smart monitoring programs, and there's lots of freeware out there yeah. that does it, they sit there and, and just sort of watch the drive. Yeah. SpinRite is working the I drive, generating these errors, and looking at the rate at which they occur. We only have a minute or two more. Can you show us? Uh, is there data recovery built into this? How do you do well, data recovery? Data recovery is built in. It's going if there's on right ever now. a problem, yes. Yeah. Uh, you'll, well, actually, the, the, uh, the Dynastat data recovery screen um, shows you it, it'll offer automatically kick in if there's a problem that cannot be recovered. And as the drives begin to get a little fritzy, that's what happens. Is they start being it? able to run it. The, 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 um, the drive has actually stored extra data in the sector right. that it redundancy. uses to recover. Yeah, exactly. Right. For some redundancy, in, or, in order to recover the data, if it wasn't able to read it normally, right. it then falls back on this extra data and uses algorithms to recover it. So you're using that to try to save that data, move it to a safer sector. Oh, SpinRite does all kinds of things. It'll even, if, if, it can, if it finally can't read all 512 bits, only a few extra bits might be unreadable. SpinRite will read what it can 
and and save that much for you. Yeah. So like some databases w w will be completely inaccessible if they have one unreadable sector. Right. Spin right will fix those. Well, in fact, we used to sell it a lot when people were moving from. Remember when they were going to Fat Thirty Two? Yeah, yeah. From, from Fat Sixteen. From yeah. Fat Sixteen, uh, Microsoft's converter would refuse to convert right. if there were any errors on the drive. So you had to fix it. They would run Spin right to fix the drive. Then they can convert to Fat Thirty Two. Now Spin not cheap. It's about what eighty dollars. Eighty nine dollars. Eighty nine dollars U.S. Yep. So not everybody's going to go out and buy it. We generally don't sell it to people who have extra money. You know, <laughs> they buy it the first time because their drive died. Because they're in trouble. Yeah. Spinrite fixes it, and then they become true believers, yeah, I'm a true and they believer. run it every month. I and I keep it around because when I fix other people's drives, this is the best tool to have, and right. I, and I do it all the time. Spinrite is available from GRC.com. It's a tiny download, though, so don't uh, don't don't freak out if it only downloads in a few seconds. Yeah, even on a modem, it's you got practical it. to get it. <laughs> you got it. Uh, and and I do think it is worth the eighty-nine dollars U.S. Uh, highly recommend. Well, it's, it. what's your value? What's the value of your data? Would you ever consider doing like a kind of a stripped down minimal version for less money or you really need all of these features? I you know we're selling it <laughs> people you know, want it. like crazy right now and, you make and a good be point. Be because it really does the job it does the job it's the only program that does you know Norton saw this the folks at Symantec saw it and said or actually they Norton, wanted to buy it then. they wanted to buy it Steve said no they said well we can do that they did try but this is the one the only the original spin right Steve Gibson's a pioneer and a legend in the business and the president and founder of Gibson Research Corporation Check them out online, grc.com. That's where you'll find Shields Up, Spin Right, and a whole lot more.